Hi everyone, it's me, Arielle, and it's Wednesday Warriors. This week I'm going to be talking about things like recognizing whether you're deliberately exposing yourself to triggers, and if so, why that is. Last week I did a video about just triggers in general, and um, I talked a little bit about what makes triggers different from toxic things and why it's good to avoid toxic things but not necessarily good to avoid triggers because then you're never really dealing with the problem at hand. So when I talk about today's topic, I'm going to be talking about reasons why we might ignore trigger warnings or continue relationships with people who trigger us or um, even seek out things that are triggering. Now, you first have to understand that triggers mean different things for different people. What one person might find triggering, another person wouldn't be bothered by at all. So all of this stuff is very relative. All of this stuff is very individual. And you have to listen to this video and go into any kind of thinking about triggers, realizing and understanding that. I invite you to first watch my video from last week where I talked for pretty much 15 minutes exactly about triggers and all of the things they can mean and be for us. I talked about asking yourself certain things when you find yourself being triggered by something to sort of get to know the patterns. And something else you might want to ask yourself if you're being triggered is did I put myself in this situation on purpose? Now, if you put yourself in this situation to try to get over a trigger, um, it's not really the same thing as intentionally trying to sabotage yourself. Um, there, there comes a point in recovery where if so many things trigger you, you're going to have to start facing them and you're going to have to start working at them little by little because the world's a triggering place. And if you just hide yourself away in your home, in your room for the rest of your life so that you're avoiding triggers, you're not really getting any better and, that, better, and that's not a healthy way to live either. But um, if you intentionally, when you're doing well, seek out something that you know already is going to be a trigger for you, you might want to analyze and assess why that is. Is it because you have already, in your mind, screwed up for the day and you just don't care? You're just going to keep um, that all or nothing attitude where maybe everything's going well so you can keep it going well and then when one bad thing goes wrong, it's just like, damn it all, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to give in to all the bad stuff. The day is already bad. I, it doesn't matter if I make it worse at this point. You might want to ask yourself if it's a form of punishment. Are you angry at yourself or disappointed in yourself or so self-loathing in that moment that you actively want to destroy yourself or hurt yourself or make yourself feel bad? So maybe putting yourself in a triggering situation or making yourself face something that you know isn't good for you is your way of punishing yourself, saying, here, this is what you deserve. Have you, in a sense, been bullied into triggering situations by other people, whether it's parents, family members, friends, significant other? Um, you know, maybe they're telling you that you need to do this thing or you need to be at this place or you need to, you know, to do whatever the triggering element is and you just give in because you want to please people or you're afraid of disappointing them. And the way that they keep pressuring you, you're essentially pressured to trigger yourself. You feel like you don't have a way out. These are just a few examples, but there are any number of ways that people can purposefully put themselves in difficult, triggering situations. Usually it's a form of self-sabotage. Usually they know what they're doing on some level and they're going to do it anyway. And sometimes it's just as simple as they've given into the eating disorder thoughts. That part of their mind is stronger that day and they give into it. Sometimes people get frustrated and when they're frustrated they just take things out on themselves. Sometimes they get so frustrated with, with recovery they don't want to put any effort into it another second. Sometimes people have the mentality, well, I can start again tomorrow. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. I won't do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. And there's always tomorrow. Tomorrow's always a brand new day and you can always start fresh and that's the great thing about tomorrow. But if you find that you're using tomorrow as an excuse to cut yourself a lot of slack today in the recovery department, then you might want to take a look at that. 
sometimes we can't avoid triggering situations, but we can give ourselves some direction when we're in those triggering situations. We can say, if this happens or this happens, I will walk away. And is if you can learn to follow your own rules, you'll be more in control and you'll be the one setting the standards. Also, if if you can take some of the power away from triggering things, like if something that's triggering you is a scale or a fashion magazine, if you can rip out the pages of that fashion magazine and toss it in the trash, then you're sort of taking your power back a little bit in a symbolic way. Same thing with the scale. If you can throw it out or you can relinquish it to someone you trust or you can take a hammer and smash it, which I know is hard for a lot of people uh, to be ready to do, but if you can take your power back with something like that, it can be a really powerful thing and it can really sort of set the stage for a new mindset for you. Look, triggers aren't these pesky little creatures with talons and sharp teeth that are going to come and get you no matter what you do. You can be in control. You have to believe that you have the power. You can't give something like a trigger complete and utter control over you. Triggers aren't elusive. They're right here. They're right now. You know what they are for the most part. And if you don't know what they are, you're maybe doing some of the things that I talked about in last week's video where you're trying to figure out the patterns so you can say, oh, this person does trigger me or this thing does trigger me. And now you know you're on your way to knowing. They Triggers aren't elusive where you have to search for them and find them. They're there. They're staring you in the face. And because they're there, you can combat them, you can fight them, and it's all in your power to do so. Trust yourself. Remember what's at stake. Use your instincts. Make goals. Give it your best shot. No, your best shot. Erase can't from your mind. There is no can't. You can do this. Have faith in yourself. Recognize the patterns. Stay strong and celebrate that strength. If you successfully push through something, if you stay strong in recovery, if you don't give in to behaviors or your eating disorder thoughts, pat yourself on the back. Acknowledge that. Be proud of yourself. Don't say, oh, well, I got through today, but I wonder how tomorrow will be. Say, I got through today. That's huge. Tomorrow's a new day and I'll try again. But tweak your mindset a little bit. Tweak the way you talk to yourself. Be a cheerleader for yourself. Hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you next time.